All right. So welcome to the show today, guys. We're so glad you're here. We are talking about your fitness floor or your minimum exercise level. We were kind of deciding before we hit record on this, because this is something that we think is really important. Um, both of us were listening to another podcast this week and they kind of briefly mentioned it. And I was like, we need to do an entire episode on that because yeah, it's something that is so important and does not get talked about enough. And I was like, okay, let's put a name to it. So Kevin and I were thinking of like, try, you know, fun things to try to remember. And we came up with Mel, M-E-L. What is your minimum exercise level and why is this important? Okay. Because a lot of times we talk about goals. We talk about setting big goals. We, we talk about having a lighthouse in the distance. We talk about the difference between outcome goals and process goals. We've got tons of really great episodes on goal setting. So if you haven't checked those out yet, or if you're new to the podcast, first of all, welcome. We're super glad you're here. Go back. We've got, this is episode 293. So we've got tons of episodes covering all sorts of things about goals and goal setting and all of that. But this topic, we've never actually covered on the podcast. Yeah, I don't think we've really right? directly addressed that. We certainly have never done a whole episode on Yeah, this. I don't think we have. And I think this is something that is super important for us to cover because it's your minimum. It's your minimum exercise level that you are okay with having in your life. It is your floor. We always talk about ceilings, breaking through ceilings, breaking the glass ceilings that are above us, right? Sure. But how often do we talk about our floor? And it's a great time to talk about this right now because it's February and a lot of people set New Year's resolutions. Of course, the ever popular New Year's resolution. And it turns out that in recent research, only about 80% of people still are going with their New Year's resolutions into February. By February. Right? February. By February, only 20% of people are still on track for their New Year's resolutions. And, and it drops further from there. Yeah. Like later in the year, it but, goes down to like 90% have abandoned yeah, their, resolu their resolutions for the year. Right. So not to say that you shouldn't make them, but it's important to know what your floor is. What is that level that you are not willing to go beneath? Because establishing that floor is going to help you improve your consistency and your ability to adjust when life gets in the way. Because as you know, we are real life runners here, right? We understand that sometimes real life gets in the way, but Real life shouldn't completely derail you and throw you totally off track. And when you have a minimum baseline, then that's going to help you to account for those times when things don't go to plan. Right. It, it accounts for when stress shows up, when, you, when your week is not normal, what are you still going to be able to accomplish? Finding Mel, like Mel. I like Mel. Minimum exercise level. Yeah, I like Mel. I was trying all sorts of different things. I couldn't come up with anything yeah. super, super long. And that's why it's a duo on the podcast. We work together. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I, there was just too many of the same letters when I was trying to do it. I couldn't make a word. Um, but it, it's really good because it's so rooted in reality mm -hmm. of, all right, if I can just always hit this. And it's not that that's what you're, you're shooting for, but it says I can always hit this no matter what else comes up. Like right. unless you get hit by like a truck and you're literally in the hospital, like- And can't move. Yeah. Like you, you, you're bedridden, but like- That's a different circumstance. But these are things where like there's just- it's not a perfect week because like, quite frankly, it's almost never a perfect week, but this is like a real stressed out week. Mm -hmm. What are you still going to get in? Because you want to, because you feel like you really, you need to get that in. It's because like it, it matters to you. Because it matters to you. That's a great way of putting it. Yeah. Because your health, your exercise level, that is a form of self-love. Okay. When you exercise, I encourage everyone, do not exercise to lose weight. Do not exercise because you don't like your body. Exercise because you love your body. Exercise because your health is important to you. Exercise because you love movement. You love the way that movement makes you feel. You know that exercise is a good thing for you. And exercise is just a self, is an expression of self-love. And that is a huge shift that if you haven't made yet, I really encourage you to rewind that those 15 seconds that I just were, was talking and listen to that part again, okay? Because discipline 
is a form of self-love. Exercise is a form of self-love. Taking care of yourself, foregoing instant pleasure and instant gratification for your future self is a form of self-love. And that's why it's so important for us to know, okay, this is my absolute minimum. This is the floor. We're not digging into this floor. There's no basement <laughs> under this floor, right? What is my minimum every single week that I commit to getting in? I commit to myself, not because I have to, not because I um, want to lose weight and I might not achieve my goals if I get there. No, because I love myself. Exercise is important to me and I'm going to do this and I'm going to make sure that I don't fall below this level. Yeah. I, I like that exercise is a form of self-love. Now that I've doubly recommitted to my strength training for the, the year and I open with like the, the arm swings mm -hmm. and you do the arm swings, you get to wrap across yourself you, before you even start lifting. You're giving yourself a big hug right there in the weight room. There you go. Self-love. I love it. All right. Off we go. All right. So let's talk about what Mel should look like. Okay. This minimum exercise level. What are some of the the steps that we need to take when we learn when we figure out how to establish this. So before we jump into knowing what your minimum exercise level should be, we want to talk about what happens if you don't have one. Okay. Why is Mel so important in your life? And number one is when you set a goal, right? A lot of times you're you're shooting for the stars, right? Which we're phenomenal. Yeah, fantastic, right? But if you have a goal without a floor, then essentially what's happening is you're only working with the best case scenario, right? We're looking at, okay, I want to achieve this goal. Okay, great. That's my outcome goal. Now I'm going to set process goals, right? Great. Oh man, we're really doubling it up. Oh yeah, because because we've listened to the podcast and we just did a great episode on this a couple weeks ago, right? I know that I want to run a marathon. So that means I'm going to have to run five days a week. I'm going to have to strength train twice a week. This is what my process goal is. Wonderful. Fantastic, right? But the problem is, Sometimes life gets in the way, right? Sometimes we don't hit those process goals every single week. And that can be frustrating if we are repeatedly missing out on hitting those goals. And it leads a lot of people to just giving up. Right. So if you've got the process goals and you keep kind of like not quite hitting all of the process week in and week out, you, you feel like you're... It's not that you didn't get to the big goal. It's that you're missing the steps along the way. It's yeah. literally week after week failure that then ultimately leads many people to giving up on like the big picture mm -hmm. goal because all you've got is a goal. So if you don't get to the goal, you just fall back to nothing. That's the problem with just having the goal and not having that thing that there's a safety net to a floor underneath you. It's it's the floor. Otherwise, it's, it's a bottomless pit. No one wants a bottomless pit. <laughs> No one wants a bottomless pit, right? And so if we create goals without accounting for those challenges and things that pop up in our lives, because we can't, right? We can't actually account for everything that's going to pop up in our lives. We can kind of give it our best guess. We're like, you know, I know my kids are in sports. I know that they're probably going to get sick at some point. Like there's a <laughs> chance of that happening, of right? There like there are things that we can kind of assume are likely, in, and that might throw us off our goal. But you're never quite sure when that's coming you up. You never like know. Sometime in the next right. nine months, my kids are probably going to get sick. Right. Or I'm going to get sick. Right. right. There's a lot of people right now that are sick. Like people have been sick for a long time now. Like yes. there's just so many, so much going around now. And this is what's happening. And so you might think, okay, well, there might be a chance that I could get sick. But you, like Kevin said, you don't know when that's going to happen. You don't know how severe it's going to be. You don't know how long it's going to take you out of training. Are you just, do you just have a head cold for a couple of days? You need to take, you know, a day or two off, or are you completely laid up with like a stomach flu followed by another flu followed by like, who knows what else, right? So when we fall off that path, a lot of times people see that as failure, right? If we don't make it all the way to the mountain, we fail. What? But when we have that minimum baseline, when we have that minimum exercise level, we have more security. So exactly what, what Kevin was saying, it's not that bottomless pit. It's not just a catastrophe where you decide, you know, you're, you're climbing up a mountain and you slip and you start falling and 
you never land anywhere. No, no, no. You keep kind of hooking in. Isn't right. I, I've never climbed a mountain with like actual mountain climbing yeah, no. stuff. I've walked up hills. Um, but I assume that you, I, I think the ropes process is you just keep kind of like locking yourself in. So if you fall, you're going to fall several feet, mm -hmm. meters, depending on where you're listening from. But it, it's going to catch you. You don't just fall forever unless you're free climbing, in which case, God bless you. Right. So even if you miss the goal, you're not falling as deep as maybe you would have if you didn't establish that floor, right? Because if you have a floor established, if you have MEL, if you have that minimum exercise level, that at least keeps you moving forward or at worst, not falling behind, right? right? Maybe it's, maybe you're just maintaining and that's okay. It helps you stay in the game yeah. and it helps create that consistency. It's not like, oh, well, I, I missed this day and then that misses the next day. And I guess I might as well just give up on the next week. It helps establish at least a baseline level of consistency, mm -hmm. which is super good for your long-term growth. It's super good for your like really big long-term lifelong health goals. Mm -hmm. Like that's what you need that baseline for. Right. That's that's what it helps with. It's it's the consistency of I don't always have to be striving for perfection week upon week, but I, I'm not getting below this level. Right. And so we like to think of this uh, exercise, minimum exercise level as similar to saving money. Totally. Right. So like if your goal is to put away, say, a thousand dollars per month, but you can only come up with five hundred, then a lot of times people are like, well, it's not worth it. Right. Yeah, because I'm not meeting spend the five hundred. I'm not meeting my goal. Right. Mm -hmm. But if the floor is at least $50, then $50 is good, but $500 is better, right? Maybe that's now I'm, I, I can just kind of shift the way that I'm looking at it. Maybe the goal is still $1,000, right? Sure. But you're like, my goal is to put away $1,000 a month, or my goal is to put away 500 bucks a month, whatever your, whatever it is. But even if I have unexpected things come up, expenses come up that we're not supposed to be there, I know that I can still put 50 bucks away, yeah. right? That's my minimum investment for that month, and for any month. It's a floor. And yeah. you know, in that case, it, it suggests that saving money is, is an important value to you. Yes. In minimum exercise level, it suggests that exercise is a core value that's important to you. Mm -hmm. It's important to week upon week, continue to establish habits that build your long-term health. Yes, exactly. So what is a floor. What is MEL, the minimum exercise level? How do you, like, what does this even mean, right? So we, we hopefully you understand now why a minimum exercise level is important. Now let's talk about what it actually is, okay? Because the floor, MEL, is not you at your best. MEL is not the goal, right? It is not what you're striving for. It's just what is assumed. This is the minimum. This is the, the decision that you make that says, I will not go below this level, even on my worst day, even in my worst week, this is the minimum exercise level that I will commit to, that I will get in every single day or X number of times per week. Yeah. And I think it varies depending on if you're looking at like per day, per week, mm -hmm. and you can have different different goals out there. Like and we're going to talk about that in the next section. Right. Different levels in there. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't just have to be like, okay, over the course of the year, I'm going to go for 200 runs. Like mm -hmm. that's a weird way to set this thing up. You kind of figure out a timeline that makes sense for you, but it's... I think the week is helpful. I think the but week we're going to talk about that in the next part. Sure. But if you, if you kind of confuse your goal with your floor and you're like, all right, well, at least I've made it to that. And it brings you this like, well, I've got there so I, I can kind of phone it in for the west, rest of the week. You're going to get to this point where you're just not progressing. Yeah. And you're, you're certainly not going to be satisfied. You may be satisfied at first because you're like, well, at least I got through that. And then next week is, well, at least I got that in. But that satisfaction is going to wane because you're not inspired for something. There's not bringing joy. You're, There's no progress. You're barely scraping right. what you established as a I guess I'll at least get to this level. You should be striving for more than that. Mm -hmm. It's it's the safety net. Right. But the, the floor is the level that you commit to even when life feels overwhelming, even when life is busy, when the kids have a million things to do, when you're not feeling great and you don't feel like going out for a run, you don't feel like strength training. What is the minimum that you commit to? on the days that you don't want to do it, on the weeks that you're not feeling it, on the weeks that are overwhelming. So this, like you need to take an honest look at your life and say, all right, what's my minimum, right? What the heck is my minimum? Because 
like Kevin said, this is not the goal. We should not be happy that we are at the floor. That is not the goal of this. We should be satisfied that, okay, at least I got that in. I kept that commitment to myself. But week upon week of floor is not going to lead to progress, right? So we want to still be striving. We, we want to still be setting goals. But we also know I will not go below this level. And that's something that I'm going to commit to for myself. Right. Living at the floor, training at the floor, exercising at the floor creates a problem. Like imagine that you're training for a marathon. You're certainly going to need some long runs, but sometimes things get in the way and that long run is just, it's not going to happen. You hit Saturday and your kid's got a soccer tournament. It's an all day thing and you're feeling a little under the weather and you're just like, okay, this is not a good idea to go out for a three hour long run, a, like whatever the long run is. Maybe you miss the long run. Maybe you only get in like a handful of miles. You're like, well, at least I got in something over the weekend. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Okay. Every once in a while that's going to happen and your, your marathon buildup is not going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. But if your long run is five miles week upon week, marathon day is not going to go well for you. You cannot live at the floor. You can't train at the floor. Eventually you're going to get to a point where you're not progressing. Right. There's no stress on the body. So you have to strive for higher, but it does establish consistency. Exactly. So when you establish your floor, that is just, this is the lowest that I will go. Okay. So how do you know what that should be? How do you actually establish Mel? How do we create our minimum exercise level? Okay. So the mistake that a lot of people make is that they just ignore their health and fitness when other things get in the way. Like mm -hmm. when life gets in the way, we're just going to, okay, I guess, I guess it's gone out the window, yes. right? Like, and so this is one of the problems of not having the floor or you decide, okay, well, I'm gonna just, you try to kind of figure it out on the fly, right? When life does get busy and overwhelming, you decide, okay, like how can I get some stuff in? And what happens a lot of times is that you end up trading one area of fitness for another. So if you're a runner and you've been listening to our podcast and you know that you need to run, you need to do different types of runs, you need to strength train if you want to improve and uh -huh. get better, yep. right? A lot of times when life gets overwhelming, you might still continue to run, but just completely get rid of strength training, yep. right? So you're just completely ignoring one side of things and only doing the stuff that you like better. Right. So you end up like completely off balance. And if you've established that ahead of time and you've decided that that's going to be your minimum exercise level, that's okay. Right. I think that our floors can look completely different. Our MELs can look completely different from each other. We would encourage you to try to make yours as balanced as possible, but that's up to you. Okay. So how are you going to establish this? Um, that's really what we want to talk about now. Yeah. I mean, I think if Angie and I really like laid out very specifically what our floors are, you, you have to rely on part of why exercise also brings you joy. Mm -hmm. And I gain more joy from the running aspect than I gain from the strength. Angie, she gains a lot of joy from the strength aspect. So and on a base level, I would probably still try and get in as I've definitely reestablished 2023 where strength training hardcore. You are. There's going to be strength. My floor includes strength, but it might not include the same level, the same amount, right. the same intensity as Angie's level. Or as your normal level. Yes. Right? As your goal level. Well, it's definitely, right? it's like, going to be a step down from my goal. Because you, don't have to, you don't have to compare it to me by any means, right? right? But it's like, okay, with my minimum exercise level, how many days per week am I going to exercise at yep. all? And okay, of those, say it's five days, of those five days, how many strength sessions, how many running sessions, right? You can break those up so that you can still try to maintain some sort of consistency in all areas versus just one. Right. And I think another thing that is important here is not just looking at running and strength, but realizing that your health and fitness also involves things like sleep and recovery and nutrition and things like that. So it's like, okay, well, at a base level, I have to get in four runs during the week is not a great base level. If you're just trading off. Okay. Well, I fit in my run, I only got two hours of sleep, but at least I fit yeah. in my fourth run. So I hit my floor. That is not an appropriate trade-off because you're, you're sacrificing too much to try and hit that. Yeah. We're looking at your overall health and fitness. Cause that, again, going back to the very beginning of this episode, this is a form of self-love for yourself. And if you are sacrificing your sleep and other things so that you can get in more running, is that really loving yourself? Is that really taking care of yourself in the best way possible? And I would say no, okay, depending on what is going on. So 
The other mistake that a lot of people make when establishing Mel is that they don't share this with the other people in their lives, right? <laughs> they just so decide, okay, this is what it's going to be. This is my baseline. This is my absolute minimum. And they know what it is, but they don't share it with other people. And if they, if you don't share it with the other people in your life that are important to you, then when stuff comes up and you don't get certain things in or things aren't going the way you want them to, you can get annoyed and resentful at those around you. But if the people around you know, okay, dad's got to run three days a week, that's, that's his minimum, then okay, how can we help you? How can we make that happen? I know that's how Kevin and I work, right? We know, like we're here to support each other in our running, our health, our life together. Like we've chosen to live life together. And Kevin is going to be a much better father and spouse if he's taking care of himself. So I believe that it's part of my job as his spouse to help him any way that I can, okay? And that doesn't mean that I'm gonna self-sacrifice and put my own needs to the side, and that's not what I'm talking about here, right? But how can we communicate and work together so that I know Kevin's minimum, he knows my minimum, and we can kind of look at things, we can look at our calendar and our schedule and say, all right, how are we going to make all of this work? Right. Because sometimes we come up with weeks where it's just like, wow, there is a lot on the calendar this week. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I need to fit exercising in here. And you're like, okay, yeah, I need to fit my exercising in right. here. And we need to figure out how this is all going to manage to fit in. So both of us are still our best. And this is not like I have to go out and run to run the crazies off, to run the, the stress off or whatever. It's, it's a, it is part of me of having a regular exercise routine. It is, it's what makes me my best self. Okay. Now, this is not, I use running as my form of therapy. That is, that is a different setup. This is, I am simply my best self when I am regularly exercising, mm -hmm. but I also have to be very honest and establish priorities. And I love my family. They are very high on my priority list. And so when things come up, I will sacrifice running for family. I just am not going to do it day upon day upon day because eventually I'm just going to get super resentful and annoyed at all of my family. Right. So there has to be this balance and it has, it can't be like, all right, well, no matter what, I have to go for a three hour run this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's not always going to play in depending on how what that, that group around you looks like. Mm -hmm. They may need you more than that. And you have to be like, okay, I, I need to get in my four days, but I will pull back on the time. Maybe I'll, I'll, 30 minutes will be sufficient for me right. at a base floor level. That's why, like, this is the floor mm -hmm. that's like, this is what I need to do for me. Right. And so when you establish the floor, it requires you to establish your priorities, like what Kevin was just saying, and put yourself on that list. Put yourself at the top of that list, right? Because if you care for yourself, you are going to be much better at caring for every other person in your life. And I think this is something, this is one of those mistakes that we as parents tend to make all the time. We think that we need to give up whatever we want for our kids or for our families. And that is just not true. That is a lie that has been perpetuated by society, by mommy shaming, by dad shaming. There's all sorts of things out there. And you need to fill up your cup first, put on your own oxygen mask first so that you can be better for everyone else around you, right? So what does your floor look like? And this is the question that you have to ask yourself. And I would love to hear your answer. And I would love to put you on the hook and tell you to come send me a DM over on Instagram at Real Life Runners and let me know what is your floor. What is the absolute minimum that you can get in every week that you can still say exercise is a priority. I am a priority in my life. And this matters. Exercise is a way for me to love myself, for me to take care of myself, to, to help me to at a minimum maintain my health and not, you know, fall down um, in the health. And so what does that look like for you? Right? So for some people, it might be 10 minutes every day, and maybe it's walking your baseline, your minimum exercise level can just be walking if that's what you think it would look like on your worst week. So imagine worst case scenario, things are, you know, craps hit the fan. Things are not where, where you want them to be at all. What are you committing to as your minimum that you will definitely get in no matter, no matter the weather, no matter what's going on with other people in your life? What are you going to commit to? 
Right. And it goes back to those, those priorities is, okay, well, normally it would be really inconvenient for me to work out or exercise at this time, but that's, that's all I've got this week. Like it is not the most convenient thing for me to try and squeeze an exercise in the middle of my day. I, I teach, I don't have a lot of time there, but I do have time to fit small things into my lunch. Mm -hmm. It kind of messes with lunch a little bit, but not enough that I can't squeeze something into my lunch. It's not the most convenient. I enjoy kind of having a little like downtime. That's my off period. So I enjoy that. But I want to prioritize my exercising over just being able to sit back and relax and, and take a little breath during lunch. Right. So sometimes there are trade-offs on this thing mm -hmm. and you have to have to accept this. Right. And like Kevin said, maybe that means that on those crazy weeks, you wake up a half an hour earlier than you normally would in order to get that exercise in. Because you look at your calendar, or your schedule, and it's just insane that the whole rest of that day or like the whole week, you're going to have to adjust, but you're going to have to go, okay, what's the minimum, right? So if you decide I'm going to exercise for 30 minutes, three times per week, when, when it's not every day, that gives you some wiggle room too, right? Like on yep. those crazy weeks. So I would suggest when you're thinking about this for yourself, I would suggest not making it every day because a lot of times stuff comes up. I would say set the number of days per week. So if, if that's three days, four days, five days, whatever your minimum days per week that you want to move your body. If it's every day for you and, and it, say your number is five minutes every single day, totally cool, right? I think that you can pretty much find five minutes every single day to go out for a little walk or to do some yoga or to do some breathing. Like that seems reasonable if you're working at ways, five minutes. There's different ways that you can do it too, right? And understanding what my, my minimum is. So maybe your minimum is sitting down for five minutes and doing some breath work. Sure. That can be a form of self-care. But I would also say, also know what your exercise looks like, right? So like Kevin said, um, when you set up your minimum exercise, how many days per week are you going to walk? How many days per week are you going to run? How many days per week are you going to include some strength training? Like I was scheduled for a strength training session yesterday and I was tired. My body was sore. I was tired. It's just the way I felt. And, you know, it's that time of the month. So sorry if that's too much information, but let's just be honest, ladies. Like there are times that our bodies don't feel the best. You know, we've got cramps, we've got back pain, we've got other things going on. And I just did not feel like strength training, but I'm like, it's on my calendar. So I'm going to do it. I'm not going to go like go heavy on my weights today. I'm going to go at a weight that I know I have no problems with, that I know that I can maintain good form so that at a minimum, I'm maintaining my strength level and I'm maintaining that consistency because that consistency is a vote for the future self that I'm creating, that it's a vote for exercise is important for me. I want to be a strong woman that is able to be active and live a life without limitations. That is a vote in that category. And if I'm just skipping strength training all the time, I'm not voting in that direction at all, right? I'm taking things away from that direction. And this is not to say you should ignore your body, that it's not good to take extra rest days. You guys know we've done plenty of episodes on all of that, right? Listen to your body, take extra rest days if you need them. But what's the minimum? Like if you need an extra rest day, fantastic, take it. But also understand what is my floor? What is my minimum exercise level that I'm committing to every single week so that if maybe on day two or day three, you still don't feel like doing it, you're going to do it anyway, because that's something that you've already committed to. Yeah. I mean, I think this is, there's a, a subtle difference between I don't want to do it and it would be harmful for me to do it. Yeah. You know, like if you are really, really sick and you've established that you're, you're going to go out and run four days a week, that might not be a good combination. So the floor has to have some, like some grace to it. And, and, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying like, okay, now, you, now you've reached the floor, pick up a shovel. But I mean, there needs to be some common sense applied to this, that you're, I'm going to go out and run four times a week it needs to be four times a week for however long you're going to say, I'm going to set aside a, a special time during the day and really focus on my health. And so if you're super, super sick and you're like, I am struggling to get out of bed, maybe that's time where you take like a, a mental break from whatever it is that you're doing. Maybe you're, you're still trying to get through work. You're trying to like be on your phone, be on the computer 
computer and try and like work remotely, you need to step away from that and say, okay, now I'm going to take time for myself. Okay? This doesn't mean that the floor doesn't exist, but it applies some common sense to the floor. If you're super, super sick, you just ran a really, really long race. You're going to take some time off. That's when my floor went from, I run a minimum of four days per week to I'm going to do some movement four days this week because it's the day after or it's the week after a marathon. I, I kept the days. I just changed the intensity drastically, mm -hmm. but I feel as though I still stayed, stayed honest to my floor. Yeah. And I think that that's really the key here. And what you said, I was about to bring that up next, which is setting the minimum for movement, I think is the helpful thing. Mm -hmm. it, like your floor doesn't have to look the same every week. If you wanted to, it can, but like Kevin said, if you're really sick and you've got say pneumonia or a lot of congestion in your lungs where running is not recommended, you can still go out for a walk. You can still do that. That is as long as you are not bedridden, mm -hmm. right? Like by doctor's orders or by your own orders, like say like, I cannot get out of bed. This would be dangerous and not a good idea for me to get out of bed, right? Yep. Like if you're dizzy and you have other sort of like, you know, head issues going on, different story. That's I not do, what we're talking about. I do not about. mess with dizzy and head right. issues. I don't mess with my sleep floor. That is much more of a hard floor for me than my number of runs per week. Yeah. And it has become that since, you know, the 2017 with when you had the health issues, because there, there has to be a minimum there. This is like my non-negotiable, right? And so when, when establishing your floor, I would suggest to make it a movement and a little bit more general. Like yes. I, I like the, I like the generality. I know early, a little bit earlier we talked about getting more specific so that you weren't um, completely ignoring a certain aspect of your fitness. Yeah, and like the for floor another. to be like an actual hard floor, but the, in in the reality of it is yeah. there is some some softness to the floor. There There's is. some wiggle there where common sense and your your big picture health has to win out over no matter what I do this mm -hmm. because that can, okay well I broke my leg but I said four days of running per week so I guess I'm uh, on the broken leg I'm going for it no that that's just not wise right but if you decided you were going to do four days per week. That's going to be your minimum. That's your mel, right? I am going to exercise four days per week. Of that, four, of those four days, your goal, maybe like one step above mel, would be like two days of strength training and two days of running or walking, mm -hmm. right? So on your strength training days, if you're really not feeling up to it, maybe you just kind of go through some of the general movements. You don't necessarily have to pick up a weight. You don't yep. have to go to the gym, but maybe you just do some mobility exercises or some gentle yoga or something like that so that you're still moving in those similar ways versus just going out for another walk or another run, right? Yeah. Like you're still kind of mimicking some of the strength training movements, um, but you're only doing body weight or you're doing much less intensity, or maybe you're only doing one round instead of three rounds, right? But you're establishing some sort of minimum so that you know, okay, even on my worst weeks, I'm going to at least get this in and that's going to make me feel good about myself. That is going to be a vote for me right? This is what your minimum exercise level is all about. Your MEL is about you. And it's about you committing to yourself saying, my health matters. My exercise, my fitness matters to me because that's the kind of person that I am. We're trying to build that identity or maintain that identity as I am a healthy person. And even on my worst weeks, I can still make time for movement. So if you are a person that has ever struggled with inconsistency, start here, establish Mel, establish your minimum exercise level that you vow you're just not going to fall beneath. That's it. It's simply a decision. I'm not going to ever go below this. And that's just how it's going to be. So you're saying that your, your Mel is a vote for yourself. So your minimum exercise level is a me level. Yes. You like that? I do like that. Thank you. I've been thinking about that for like several minutes as it's, you went there. It's a me level. It's a me level. Yeah, it's okay. your minimum exercise level. I like it. It's a vote for yourself. It's, it's a vote, a vote that says, I believe in myself and I value myself. I am not at nothing. Your floor should not be nothing because your floor helps show where you value yourself and you should certainly value yourself above nothing. Exactly. So 
We hope this made sense to you guys. It makes a lot of sense to us. And I think that it's something that's really, really important that people don't talk about enough. And if you're like, I don't really know what to do with my mail, send me a DM again on Instagram. I'm here. I'm here to kind of help ask you questions, kind of guide you through this and help you figure out what that might look like for you. But when you look at it again, go to your worst case scenario. I think that's the key here. This is not a goal. Remember, Mel is not a goal. Not a goal. Mel is the minimum that you will accept on any given week. I think it's it's helpful to go on a weekly basis. Yes, on a weekly. Um, so, I mean, do it whatever you'd like, but that's what I would recommend is like, you know, in any given week, I'm going to move my body five times for at least 10 minutes. That would be a good place to start, Solid right? Mark. Or three times a week for 30 minutes. I'm going to get that in. If that seems like, you know, just start at a level that you know, without a doubt, you're going to be able to hit because you want to, again, start putting those, casting those votes for that person that you want to be or that you already are. Vote for me. Vote for me. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you as always for joining us today. Oh, big news. Um, the five-day challenge is coming back. I know I like, briefly alluded to this last week, but it's back. We're open for registrations. Head over to realliferunners.com forward slash challenge, or just go to five day running challenge.com and you can sign up for our free five day running challenge there. We're going to be teaching you how to run easier and get better results. We're going to help you figure out where you are in your running right now. We're going to help you figure out some of the obstacles that are getting in your way, both physically and mentally. Okay. This is a physical and mental challenge, right? A lot of times we as runners like to just focus on the physical side of things, but we want to help you become a physically and mentally stronger runner. And so we're going to hit both in this challenge. If you've never joined one of our challenges, you need to get yourself signed up, fivedayrunningchallenge.com. And if you have already joined our challenges before, I want to invite you back too, because the more times you go through this material, the better chance it has for, for it to actually stick because you want this stuff to stick so that you can actually start making those changes to your training, both physically and mentally, so that you can see the results. That's what we want you got for you guys. We want you guys to get the results and see the payoff of your hard work. Running is not easy. Running is a commitment. Running is a challenge. Running is something, again, that you're doing for yourself. And we want to help you get the best results because you're putting in that time. So head over to fivedayrunningchallenge.com and get yourself signed up today. And please invite your friends too. Like if you have running friends or if you have people that are like, oh, I always wanted to be a runner, invite them to the challenge. Um, we love helping runners of all ages, of all experience levels to figure out where they are now and help them to get to where they want to be. So get yourself signed up. And as always, thank you so much for joining us. This has been the Real Life Runners podcast, episode number 293. Now get out there and run your life.